Okay. Before we begin, we'd like to dedicate this presentation to a past Delray Beach native, Dr. Henrietta M. Smith. She transitioned April 21st, 2021 at the age of 98. She was a scholar, a writer, a librarian, and nationally known storyteller. She is a recipient of the 2011 Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement for her body of work as a, as a significant and lasting literary contributor. Dr. Smith has edited four volumes about the history of the Credit Scott King Award and was chair for the Credit Scott King Task Force. She has sat on many ALA American Library Association selection committees for several literary awards, such as the Credit Scott King Awards, the Caldet Awards, and the Newberry Awards. We will keep our memory of her alive, and I'm very fortunate to have known her. Dr. Henrietta Walker. Okay, get a little mouse here. Welcome, Borigani, Aslam Alaikum, Hotep, Safa Seguan. Peace and blessings. I'm Akbar from Pyramid Books. We're committed to giving the community access to learn about Afrocentric culture, heritage, and its place in the global community pyramids. Unique vision is to encourage all students, educators, and the community at large to read and enjoy the reading process. The point of view that we have chosen to examine explores the magnificent African diaspora and how the diaspora relates to each person's life experience through books. And a lot of this presentation, we will be reflecting on a lot of personal experiences growing up in the public schools and how it's mirrored and tailored to the boys of the day. The desire outcome of the pre of our, our presentation, by the way, the title of it is Hidden Racism in Children's Literature and Urgency for a Diverse Book. A lot of racism, uh, as we see, really not hidden, it's in plain view. But the desired outcome is to enhance knowledge of history of racism in literature, to enhance the knowledge of the history of racism in children's literature, to bring awareness between literary community and Black boys, and to understand a distorted relationship between Black boys and books. And we think there is a distorted relationship between Black boys and books. We're going to bring some type of understanding of that. And we want to challenge the excuse we didn't know better back then, or don't be too sensitive, it's just humor. And we want to offer some concrete suggestions for Black boys to overcome destructive images in literature. This presentation designed in a simple style in part to create some uncomfortableness in order to highlight the urgency for uplifting diverse books. The theme song for this presentation is Gap Band, You Dropped a Bomb on Me. The stark deficit of Black boys and representation in children literature has been well documented. Of the illustrated children books published in 2018, approximately 10% of the characters in those books were African, African American, or Black. 27% were about animals, and 50% were about whites. Publishing houses of these books must confront the question of why Black stories continue to be underrepresented, underrepresented and offered limited roles in print. And of those that represent Black boys, a percentage are negative or emasculated images. In this presentation, we will learn a little bit about how the ideology of war in relationship to Black boys and books works. It's insidious, learned unconsciously, and influence us without our being aware of it. Starting with children's books, they function much the same way as toys do. They reveal some of the things adult doesn't find unusual, war, ugliness, and racist stereotypes. The keystone of American literature rests with the emphasis on Greek and Latin philosophies. Early American writers used their Christian pulpits to create and defend the Puritan way. They wrote the first adult and children book. And of course, they, the, any concept of African intelligence was deliberately never acknowledged. Harvard, Cambridge, William & Mary, Yale, University of Pennsylvania, 
Princeton, Columbia, Brown, Rutgers, and Dartmouth regarded ancient Greek and Latin literature as universal truths unworthy of memorization and unworthy of critique. These high institutions of learning set the trend for later colleges and universities to stress the philosophies of Aristotle and not to investigate where Aristotelian philosophy was stolen from. Again, the African intellect was never acknowledged or even considered in the dialogue between the intellectuals of that day. What seems like what seems like black boys falling through the crack is actually them being constantly pushed over the a cliff. As they get older, they continually margin, they're continually marginalized in school and society, and they rebel against anything that has to do with books. Illiteracy, defined as the inability to read and write, isn't the issue in the case of our black boys so much as illiteracy, the unwillingness to read even if able to do so, outright rebellion. Again, we're stating that it appears war has been targeted on black boys and books. Now, theme song, you drop the bomb on me. Okay. So it was prohibited for slaves to read and write. This is an excerpt from South Carolina Act of 1740. It basically says that you would be forfeit every person of such offense for teaching uh, enslaved people to read will be forfeited the sum of 100 pounds of currency or money at the time. That's an excerpt from uh, South Carolina. 1740. And I'm going to read an excerpt from Virginia Revised Code of 1819. I thought it was pretty compelling. That all meetings or assemblies of slaves or free Negroes or mulattoes mixing and associating with such slaves at any meeting house or houses in the night or at any school or schools for teaching them reading and writing either in the day or night under whatsoever pretense shall be deemed and considered an unlawful assembly. And any justice of a county wherein such assemblies shall be either from his own knowledge or from the information of others or such unlawful assemblies may issue his warrant directly to any sworn officer or officers authorizing him or them to enter the house or houses where such unlawful assemblages may be for the purpose of apprehending or dispersing such slaves and to inflict corporal punishment on the offender or offenders at the discretion of the justice of the peace, not exceeding 20 lashes. And this is an excerpt from North Carolina Act of 1830, an act to prevent all persons from teaching slaves to read or write, to use of figures accepted. Whereas the teachings of slaves to read and write has a tendency to excite dissatisfaction in their minds and to produce insurrection and rebellion to the manifest injury of the citizen of the state. Therefore, be it, enacted, be it enacted by the General Assembly of the state of North Carolina and is hereby enacted by the authority of the same that any free person who shall hereafter teach or attempt to teach any slave within the state to read or write to use of figures accepted or shall give or sell to such slave or slaves any books or pamphlets shall be liable to indictment in any court of record in the state having jurisdiction thereof. And upon conviction shall at the discretion of the court, if a white man or woman be fined not less than $100, nor more than $200 or in prison, if a free person of color shall be fined in prison or whipped at the discretion of the court, not exceeding 39 lashes, nor less than 20 lashes. And two, be it further enacted that any slave shall hereafter teach or attempt to teach any other slave to read or write, to use of figures accepted, he or she may be carried before any justice of the peace and on conviction thereof shall be sentenced to receive 39 lashes 
on his or her bare back. Three, be it further enacted that the judge of the superior courts and the justice of the county courts shall give this act in charge to the grand juries and their representative counties. Again, we are simply stating that it appears a war has been targeted on black boys by way of books. A war. And then when they were allowed to read, this was published by American Book and Bible House in 1900. Charles Carroll makes reference in A Negro, uh, a Negro Beast to both the vague concept of evolution and the selective kind of biblical argument to make his point. No modern reader could give credence to Carroll's deeply prejudiced view and his argument would scarcely make a jolt of difference in that regard. The fascination in this volume is to pry into the mind of the contemporary white reader who may have found this volume convincing. Coming at the end of the 19th century, this book was immensely popular with those who needed rationale for their post-slavery, post-reconstruction racist beliefs. Carol position in the Negro, Carol position is that the Negro cannot be a descendant from Adam and Eve, and therefore he is not human. The advertisement for this promotion of this book is filled with testimonials from clergymen. And these testimony was under the, on a, on a, under the heading, what man of brains, brains think of this book. Like this man of brains, Reverend Isaac Turley of Texas, who says, God bless Brother Carol, who has sounded a note that will fill the world with melody. Though Brother Carol's book is quite popular, even though several editions is uh, scarce today. At the time, it was a very, very popular book. Again, we're stating that it appears a war have been targeted on Black boys way from the beginning by way of books and the church played an important role in this. Okay, Uncle Tom's Cabin, or I like the subtitle of Life Among the Lowly. Some say it's an anti-slave novel that helped lay the groundwork for the Civil War by American author Harriet Beecher Stowe, published in 1852. The novel featured the character of Uncle Tom, a long-suffering Black slave around who the story and other characters revolve, a lot of the characters revolve around the central figure, Uncle Tom. The novel depicts the reality of slavery while also asserting that Christian love can overcome something as destructive as enslavement. Uncle Tom Cabin was the best-selling novel of the 19th century and the sex second best-selling book of that century following the Bible. In the first year after it was published, 300,000 copies, that's before internet and everything, of the book were sold in the United States and 1 million copies in Great Britain. In 1955, three years after it was published, it was called the most popular novel of the day. The impact attributed to the book is so great it reinforced by the story when Abraham Lincoln met Stowe at the start of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln declared, so this is the lady who started this great war. The quote did not appear in print until 1896. It had been argued that the long durability of Lincoln's greeting as an antidote in literacy, literary studies can perhaps be explained in part by the desire among many contemporary intellectuals to affirm the role of literature as an agent of social change. Literature as an agent of social, social change. Uh, Katam Cabin opens at the Shelby Plantation in, in Kentucky. And He's later sold to a character by the name of Laguerre. And Laguerre, Simon Laguerre, he literally beats uh, Tom to death. And Tom deep faith gives him inner strength that frustrated his enemies as he moved toward his fate in Louisiana. And Thomas Laguerre was the third slave master to own Uncle Tom. And he actually beats Tom to death while Tom was holding on to Christianity. And Harriet Tubman wants to emphasize that point to make 
these slaves as having this deep spiritual connection or what she used the term soul. And while Thomas Laguerre, Laguerre, the third slave master, Uncle Tom, beat him to death, she wanted to emphasize the soul that he had in connection with his faith. And that was so powerful that to this day, African-American Black people are deep connection with soul not because it was naturally in them, it was because of Harriet Beecher Stowe. She wanted to, to pair intellect that came from the white with soul that came to, from the black to make her abolitionist movement to move it forward. And so that book was so strong, that character was so strong that even today, soul music and soul is synonymous with soul it's not almost what blacks is the whites don't have soul. This was deliberately done by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And this character, this character, Tom was so powerful that it's a common part of today's language of a negative image of a black man, the term Uncle Tom. Thomas Dixon, he was a Baptist minister, politician, lawyer, lecturer, novelist playwright and filmmaker. Dixon wrote two best-selling novels, novels. One is called The Leopard Spot. The subtitle of The Leopard Spot is A Romance of the White Man's Burden, 1865-1900. And the second novel was The Klansman. Subtitle is A Historical Romance of the Ku Klux Klan, 1905. And it romanticized and endorsed the lost cause of the Confederacy, opposing equal rights for Blacks and glorified the Ku Klux Klan as heroic vigilantes. Uh, film director W. Griffith adopted the Klansman for his screenplay, The Birth of a Nation, which inspired the creators of the 20, and it inspired the um, creators of the 20th century rebirth of the Klan. And by the way, we talked about Simon, Glick, Simon Laguerre from Uncle Tom's Cabin, the third slave master of Uncle Tom, from uh, Uncle Tom Cabin. He was recycled from Stowe's novels for Thomas Dixon's first novel, The Leopard Spot. So The Leopard Spot is about uh, Simon Laguerre. And he wanted to show how patriotic Simon Laguerre was. Remember, this was the slave master that beat Uncle Tom to death in Uncle Tom's Cabin. The Leopard Spot is about that character, Simon Laguerre, where he wanted to paint him as a proud patriotic uh, man. And he wanted to paint uh, slave, masters in a, slave masters in a positive life. That was Thomas Dixon's first book, The Leopard Spot. And by the way, the entire first edition was sold by Doubleday before it was printed. And it was an unheard of thing for a first novel at that time. It sold over 100,000 copies in the first six months, this before internet, social media. And it was written, and it was written that the reviews were generous beyond words. Again, we're stating that it appears a war have been targeted on black boys by way of books. This is a target. And again, Thomas Dixon book, The Klansman inspired D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. A landmark film in the history of cinema premieres in, uh, it premiered in Los Angeles in 1915. The film was American first feature length motion picture and a box office smash. And during its unprecedented three hours, Griffith popularized countless filmmaking techniques that remain central to the art today. The film, again, I say, was actually titled The Klansman for, its, for the first month of its release. An African American was portrayed as beast, beautish, brutes, lazy, morally degenerate, and dangerous. In this film climax, the Klan, the Klan rises to save the South from 
the Reconstruction Era prominence of African Americans in Southern public life. They did not want to see Black in public spaces. The first motion picture to be screened in the White House, viewed by President Woodrow Wilson, who commented, this is exactly how it is. On the D.W. Griffith's time, filmmaking became an art form. He will most likely forever be regarded as the father of cinema. And we're supposed to be happy about literature. Insidious. Speaking of insidious, Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, he was one of the first novelist to introduce a Black character that actually had a name. Before that, they weren't considered as people or nothing. So Mark Twain introduced the character, Nigger Jim. First time, one of the first time a Black man ever had a name in a book. We can uh, compliment uh, Mark Twain for that. Before that, we weren't even mentioned in books, but Mark Twain gave us an identity, and that identity came by the character, Nigger Jim. I remember reading this as a youngster, reading that, and it was like heavy, heavy at the time. In 1935, Ernest Hemingway announced that all modern American literature comes from one book by Mark Twain. It was Huckleberry Finn. If you read it, he continued, you must stop where the nigger Jim is stolen from the boys. Remember in the book, they stole him from the boys. This is the real end of the book. The rest is just cheating. This is from Ernest Hemingway. By the way, again, I say, this is the first time in literature black men were given a title or a name, and that was nigger. Marinate on that for a while. That is a bomb. That is a bomb. First time in American literature. Twain gave that title. That is a bomb. And when the child is reading that, it doesn't even resonate what just happened. History is current events. Seeing oneself distorted in literature or not seeing oneself at all was part of an early introduction to black boys and books. And by the way, this wasn't just happening in the Americas, it was happening all over the, the world. Florence Cape Uptown was an American born, she was an American born English cartoonist and author, most famous for creating the Gollywog character, featured in a series of children books. Florence, at the age of 16, attained work as a professional illustrator. Her first book, this is the first book, The Adventures of Two Dutch Dolls and a Gollywog, was published Christmas 1895. Gollywog sequels issued annually until 1909. As the Gollywog stories became involved in the nurseries of England, Gollywog dolls were produced for sale. These were followed by Gollywog ink pots, paper weights, paper knives, games, greeting cards, and wallpapers. Gollywog was based on a black minstrel. They just loved minstrel dolls. And Uptown had played with as a small child. Minstrel dolls is gonna become a foundation of American literature and literature globally. Again, Golly Wall was based on a black minstrel doll that Uptown played with as a small child in New York. Florence Uptown created and what creation was embraced by the English public and Golly Wall became a national star. One of the hottest selling books, one of the hottest selling book series in England and later South Africa. Think about images, whoa. Some believe the Gollywog predates the Uptown books and can be traced in Dutch folklore to Black helpers, helpers of St. Nick. Again, we're stating that it appears a war has been targeted on Black boys by way of books, by way of the church, and it also came internationally. Now imagine a Black child be give, being given this book. 
the damage that it would do for his psyche. All right, and while that was happening internationally at home, Helen Bannerman, she is best known for her first book, Little Black Sambo, 1899. In 1900, a US publisher named Frederick Stokes brought the rights of the books, changed the cover, reset the type, and published a US version. Little Black Sambo was an, an immediate bestseller. Loose publication laws of the time led to several priority versions being printed. That's why we'll see a lot of different types of little black samples. These books were, they weren't like the original and they had several startling changes. The main character, Sambo, was often drawn, drawn as a boy from Africa or South America. I know some people are familiar with the one from India. But um, Sambo was, was drawn from a boy from Africa and South Africa and was made to look dishonorable and unintelligent. The name Sambo even began to be likened as a racial slur. It remained on the recommended book list for children well into the 1960s, and is still considered a favorite of children around the world. One, the Little Black Sambo is one of the largest bombs that was ever dropped on the psyche of black boys. We had Little Black Sambo now, and we had Uncle Tom. And this fascination with the minstrels is deeper than you can imagine. And we're gonna talk about the minstrels. Millions of people the world over have warm memories of growing up with Dr. Seuss books without ever realizing or even caring that some of them might have been painful to others translated into dozens of languages as well as in Braille, and, are so, and, and, and they are sold in more than 100 countries. As of March of this year, 2021, six of his books, including, and to think it, that I saw it on Marlboro Street, and if I ran the zoo, will no longer be published because of racist and insensitive imagery. Although he died in 1991, his book's popularity made him the second highest paying dead celebrity in 2020, only behind the late pop star, Michael Jackson, according to Forbes. It seems we were quick to come to his Dr. Seuss defense while ignoring the bomb that was dropped on black boys. Again, we're stating that war have been targeted on black boys by way of books. And the menstrual characters we've discussed before, and all three of these are in combination of characters and are the foundation of major institution. Bugs Bunny, and that was Warner Brothers, Mickey Mouse, that's Walt Disney and Disney World and the Disney Company, and the Cat in the Hat, who literally put Random House and Hilton Mifflin books to line, brought them to limelight. Um, Random House books went, sold their books to the bookstores, Dr. Seuss to bookstores, and Hugh Mifflin went to the schools. Publisher Weekly li listed it as the number nine on its list of best-selling books of all time. Let it be known that some of the most calculating minds went into the development of these characters. Some of the most calculating minds went into the development of these characters. In order for them, these characters to be the cornerstones of these billion dollar institutions. After we look at one commonality, we will look at one of that's, after we look at the commonality between the two, we will look at one that is generating the most chatter right now. And we will inve we have investigated the other two, that is Mickey Mouse and Donald, uh, Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. We have investigated those in prior presentation. But today we're gonna focus on uh, the Cat in the Hat, Thomas uh, 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 Seuss, Dr. Seuss. Uh, we're just gonna focus on that. But all three have something in common. 
what do all three have in common? All three of them have something in common. And is the commonality a coincidence? What do they have in common? And is the commonality a, co a coincidence? The white gloves. What do they have in common? And is the commonality a coincidence? The white gloves. My popular saying, I think one of my popular sayings is, one of my popular saying is, one of the best way to hide something from someone is right in front of their face. One of the best way to hide something from someone is hide it right in front of their face. They won't even see it. Versus a popular black saying is, and we all know that black saying, the best, the best place to hide something from a black person is inside of a book. Again, we are stating that it appears a war has been targeted on black boys by way of books. This is no accident and this is no coincidence. This was done by a calculating mind. Dr. Seuss repeatedly depicted Africans and African Americans as monkeys. He repeatedly did it. In fact, his cartoon only depict is, is in fact his cartoon only depicted black people as monkeys. His and this cartoon was made for Judge magazine in 1929. And that magazine was up for auction in 2015 for $20,000. And look at the uh, caption what it says. It caption has and has African-American men up for sale with the sign reading, take home a high grade nigger for your wood pile. It's just humor. This is your Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. This is your Dr. Seuss. This is your Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. This is another Dr. Seuss. And again, I say it was deliberately done. And even today, some just don't even care. Some don't see it and some just don't care. Quick to come to Dr. Seuss' defense, never mind the damage of the bomb that was dropped on the black boys. And by the way, while it was happening home, it was also happening abroad. Across the world, there was and is a concerted effort to show men of African descent in a negative light. The Ventures of 1010 is a series of 24 albums slash books created by Belgium cartoonist George Remy, who wrote under the pen name Hergé. This series is one of the most popular European comics of the 20th century. One of the most popular European com comics of the 20th century. By 2007, a century after Hergé's birth in 1907, 1010 had become published in more than 70 languages with sales of more than 200 million copies and have been adopted for radio, television, theater, and film. A Catholic and conservative newspaper published in Brussels had weekly youth supplement to introduce readers to 1010. And under international pressure, the Belgian parliament forced King Leopold II to cede the Congo to the Belgian government in 1908. The Belgian minister for colonies got in contact with the priest, proposing a series of positive articles and reports about the presence of Belgium in Congo. Hergé, I remember reading these books. 
as a youngster. Weren't as popular in America as they were in Europe, but I did get to read them as a youngster. Perche, 1010. Catholic and Protestant missionaries introduced Tintin or the scouts to the Congo and the scouts introduced the guns. These are the early children books. Just like Little Black Sambo. And just like the menstrual characters. The only difference is the menstrual characters are still around today and uh, none would dare touch them. Ten Ten educating the Congolese boys on the quintessence of their homeland, Belgium. Pretty powerful. My dear friends, today I'm going to tell you about your fatherland, tell you about your fatherland, Belgium. <laughs> Pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. What's heavy is the term Belgian Congo. Just marinate that for a moment. That is hidden in plain view, the Belgian Congo. When we reduce a person, when we reduce a person to nothing, it becomes easy to cut their limbs off and punish as a, as a form of punishment or just lock them up because their lives really doesn't matter. Like lives don't matter. Let's not forget the atrocities that occurred in the, in the Congo. When we reduce a person to nothing, it becomes easy to cut their limbs off as punishment or just lock them up because their lives really doesn't matter. And this is, as a, this is a sidebar commentary the elements are simple, a young boy, man, dog, snowy. That was the name of the dog, Snowy. And in later books, his gruff sidekick, quick-tempered, alcoholic, old sea dog called Haddock, which I say is, sound like wordplay on Hancock, Hannock. Remember Hannock, played by Will Smith, drunken, alcoholic. Hmm wanted to save people, but always got in trouble. Haddock was the same in the 1010 book. And Her as Hergé himself, 1010's creator, who a few weeks before his death in 1983, anointed Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, as his preferred director to make a 1010 film. Some like to think that Indiana Jones is that character. Again, we're stating that it appears a war have been targeted on black boards by way of books. You got the Sambo, you got the Uncle Tom, you got the menstrual characters, and you got the beast. The beast and the brute. Racially charged negative images black boys encounter as, as a child stay with them, often in ways that they're not even conscious of. This piece image is no accident. Again, published by American Book and Bible House in 1900. Charles Carroll refers to the Negro obese to both a vague concept of evolution and a selective kind of biblical argument to make his point. The understanding of evolution that he displays, however, is deeply flawed. flawed preserving an aspect for the reader, a set of popular misconceptions of his age. 
No modern reader could give credence to Carroll's deeply prejudiced view. However, at the time, the fascination in this volume is to pry into the mind of contemporary right reader who may have found this volume convincing. The executive mansion or president house to the White House. I remind you, this book influenced government officials at the time to change the name president house or executive mansion to the White House because blacks were considered beasts by Southern segregationists and beasts should not be dining in the White House. This occurred in 19, the changing occurred in 19, October 19, 1901 after Theodore Roosevelt invited Booker T. Washington over for what they call family supper. That point is when it was changed over to White House because the argument was beasts should not be dining at the executive mansion. So as a response to satisfy the nation, what he did was he changed the name. Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt changed the name to the White House. And as we talk about beasts, let's continue to go deeper into it. Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan is a series of 24 adventure novels published between 1912 and 1966, followed by several novels, either co-written by Burroughs or officially authorized by his estates. There are two works written by Burroughs, especially for children, that are not considered part of the main series. The series is considered a classic of literature and is the author's best known work. By the way, Tarzan has been called one of the best known literary characters in the world. Tarzan have been adapted many times, complete or in part, for radio, television, stage, and cinema. It has been adopted for a film more times than any book. Check this out. Tarzan teaches himself to read and he protects his so-called white woman from ravishing black men and apes. He's considered the Lord of the jungle. And he goes on to teach his children, the Africans, how to fight and grow food. The bomb Edgar Rice Burroughs dropped by way of Tarzan was plain and simple. As Ibram X. Kendi quotes from his book, Stamp from the Beginning, whether on Wall Street or in the forests of Central Africa, swinging through Greek literature or swinging from trees, white people will do it better than African ape like children. So much better that whites will always, the world over, become teachers of African people, even on the continent of Africa. King Kong is considered a brute. Beast, created by an Air Force pilot from Jacksonville, Florida. Man, our affection with giant apes seem to be hardwired into our DNA. Notice the one on the right. It says, destroy this mad brute, enlist. This was an enlistment poster for the US Army. But the boys saw this, they get it, and they don't have nothing to do with books. And we know it on some level, even though we don't speak it, and those who us dare speak it are quickly shot down with, it's just a joke, or why are you taking this so serious? Or why do you see race in everything? Because it is. Beast and brute. Notice the same colors of the dresses the two ladies are wearing. wearing. This is no accident. This is done by calculating sharp minds. This is a billion dollar institution. So beast of brute, if you can't see it in the Vogue magazine, the subliminal messages, notice the two horns that are coming out of the top of LeBron's head. A 
and King Kong appeared in books well before movies. Again, we're stating that it appears a war have been targeted on black boys by way of books. By the way, in November 16, November 16, Pam Ramsey, Ram, Ramsey Taylor, and she was director of Clay County Development Corporation. And uh, she was suspended, was scheduled to turn to work on December 23rd after being, being suspended for six weeks from her jobs. The post calls Clay Mayor Beverly Wiling her job. She resigned November the 16th after she commented on Taylor's original post saying, you just made my day, Pam, according to a screen grab. Both posts were deleted, but not before they were shared hundreds of times. By the way, she was confirmed, they were, they were talking about the fact that the first lady, Michelle Obama, they referred to her as an ape in heels. We just can't seem to shake that gorilla, a monkey image that has been deliberately placed on us. We just can't seem to shake it. And when these boys are faced with it, they naturally start rebelling. They want no part of it because they're not able to articulate what they're doing. The original seven books, and this was by Hans and Margaret Ray, the original seven books in this classic collection have a racist undertone that you may not remember from your childhood. I remember reading this as a child. The little monkey being captured by the man, and it was always the man was considered his handler, the man. He, kept, he got him in Africa, and then he was going to jail for misbehaving. So the little monkey was going to jail for misbehaving. And by the way, he, he was also used to do a lot of mischief stuff. He used to smoke. He was smoking pipes, smoking cigars. And he used to get sick all the time by eating puzzles and so forth. And it was published in America in 1941. And more than 200 Curious George titles followed with 75 million books sold worldwide. Curious George has been successfully adapted into major motion pictures and an Emmy winning television show on PBS. This wasn't no accident. This was deliberate. And the way to hide something is right in front of someone's face. And when the boys started rebelling from this, they rebelled into a quagmire. So when they rebel from books in a society, in such a society, the results can be devastating. When the boys started to rebel, the results Of all, the, of all black fourth graders, 58% are functionally illiterate. In some cities, 80% of our boys drop out before they finish high school. Every day, 1,000 black children are arrested. One in every eight black African-American males, ages 25, 29, is incarcerated. The number one cause of death for our black boys is homicide. Check this out. Nationally, there are 123 juveniles serving life without parole for non-homicidal offenses. Nationally, on a national level, there are 123 juveniles serving life without parole for non-homicidal offenses. They didn't kill nobody. 77 are in Florida. 77 juveniles are serving life without parole for non-homicidal offenses. Out of that 77 in Florida, 76 as you see, are black males. Again, we are stating that it appears a war have been targeted on black boys by way of books. And I guess we can assume that these are casualties of war. And by the way, pardon my little typo, it's, which actually is supposed to be it. It ain't about whether or not instructors or a system is competent. It's about how black boys are treated well, treated as problems well before they are treated as people. 
they're treated as problem as well before they're treated as people. And I would like to quote Du Bois, what does it feel like to be a problem? Again, we are stating that it appears a war has been targeted on black boys by way of books. 61 homes have been ravaged to ashes, leaving 250 Phil Philadelphians destitute and homeless. Take this quote out. This is a quote. What we did that day was never has never bothered me, he said. I went up in that helicopter with the truest intention of getting those people out unharmed. It didn't happen that way, but wasn't our fault. I can live with that. Frank Powell, 10th of May, 2020, the Guardian. Frank Powell was the one that went up and dropped the bomb. on. The, univers the University of Pennsylvania apologized for what it described as insensitive, unprofessional, and unacceptable treatment of human remains from the 1995 police bombing in Philadelphia. The human, those children, the University of Pennsylvania apologized for what it describes as insensitive, unprofessional, and unacceptable treatment of human remains from the 1995 bombing. So up until the day, they were using those children as part of their experiments. And it wasn't just University of Pennsylvania, it was also at Princeton. Princeton's anthropology department said it is in its own statement that what, that with what we know about troubled history of the field of physical anthropology, we must have asked more question of, about its research. As anthropologist department said, we acknowledge that America Physical anthropology began as a racist scientist marked by support for and participation in eugenics. It defended slavery, played a role in supporting restrictive immigration laws, and was used to justify segregation, op oppression, and violence in the USA and beyond. And this was April 29, 2021, from the publication Inside of American Higher Education. So, 13th of May, 1985, 11 people, including five children, died in the Philadelphia neighborhood, burnt down in an airstrike against African Americans. And he took those children up until 2021. Instead of having a decent burial, they were using their bones for them scientific investigation. And some says, question whether or not Black Lives Matter. The Gap Band was American rhythm and blue funk band. The band consists of three brothers and was named after the street in historic Greenwood neighborhood in the brother's hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. In 1982, the Gap Band made a hit song, You Drop the Bond on Me. It's actually based on a very sinister real life event in 1921 called the Tulsa Race Riot. KKK led a massacre that took place in the Greenwood District where Black Wall Street was located, leaving about 300 dead and 800 injured. Black Wall Street was in the Greenwood District of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we find the street Greenwood Archer and Pine, G-A-P, the Gap Band. The song is frequently played at sporting events. For example, it's played at San Francisco, Houston, Astro, and, and Miami Marlins home games when the player hits a run, a home run, the team hits a home run, they play this song. The Gap Band, you got the ball on me. The Gap Band is from Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. You dropped a bomb on me. This is the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa atrocity that took place in Adrosa, Black Wall Street. And the subtitle was it is, I will never forget. I will never forget. Appreciate the presentation.
And these are essential reading to uncover the damage. Handbook for Raising Black Children, Layla Africa, it talks about uh, fairy tales. It goes a little bit in deeper into it. Also, What's the Cat in the Hat Black? It talks a little bit more about uh, Seuss and so forth. My two favorite is Development Psychology of Black Child by Amos Wilson and Awakening National Genius of Black Child. Those two books are, uh, I think, a must have to understand how the Black children, especially boys, are developing so fast that a lot of times we think they're behind, but they're actually ahead of the game. Stand from the Beginning, I think are excellent books. And FBI is how J. Edgar Hoover Ghost Dream Frame African American Literature about when the Freedom of Information Act released the information, how the FBI had surveillance on most Black authors, Black bookstores, and Black publishers. So those are good books. All White World of Children books, um, books in African American children literature, Great recommend, a source of recommendation for good books. I thank you for the appreciation for being a part of this presentation. Um, and we always like to say, if you have any additional information, please feel free to email us at pyramidbks at yahoo.com. That's pyramid, P Y R A M I D B K S, at yahoo.com. And we always like to say, we're not trying to change the world. We're just telling the story of a people who are in desperate need of change. Thank you for uh, watching the presentation.